Sierra Parham. Thanks for tuning in. We are more than halfway through Black History Month, but the celebration at Dixie State University is still going. The art department is holding an exhibit of paintings by Las Vegas artist Harold Bradford. The gallery is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. until February 28th. A gallery talk with Bradford will take place on Tuesday in the North Plaza in room 112. The latest DSU theater production is less than a week away. The theater department student body and production director have been preparing for nearly two months for Hortus at the Bridge. The piece is a epic romantic tale about brothers that have become divided. The unique production will, absolute, will have absolutely no talking in it as the entirety of the story will be told with nothing but movement, a physical acting, and a musical score. Four performances will be held in the Eccles Main Stage Theater Wednesday through Saturday. Admission is free to all. Four score and 157 years ago, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. On Friday, DSU found a way to honor his legacy. Dixie Sun reporter Josh Green has how and why. Dixie State University received a new art piece on campus donated by the Erickson family. This statue is located on the west side of the Eccles building. To me what the statue does is it pulls into your brain a lot of things. So first of all it's an incredible piece of art. So a lot of people will look at it and say, how did this happen? And they might start exploring, I mean you might go home and Google bronze cast statues and read about the process of creating a statue like that. Stan Watts, the artist behind the Abraham Lincoln statue, had only three total made. And now one of them belongs on DSU campus. This statue was actually supposed to be located in Washington, D.C., but the generous donators, the Ericsons, beat them to the punch. And as an artist, what people don't understand is you can have an idea, but the world wants it to be someplace and I, I respect the fact that I'm not the one in charge, that, that it needs to be somewhere. And if things go, and, and so this was proposed up at the state capitol at one time, and they didn't move, it was going to fast enough. In uh, Washington, D.C., they had pictures, they loved it, but they needed to go through the art council, and I didn't know this because I, I have a sales rep, and so it had to go through the art council and the city council of Washington, D.C., and for it to land there, uh, and they accepted it, but it was too late because the last one was going here. For the Dixie Sun News, I'm Josh Green. The statue unveiling also kicked off the 33rd annual Robert and Peggy Sears Dixie Invitational Art Show, which will last until the end of March. Dixie State is making room for more parking by the Innovation Plaza. The university purchased the last remaining property on the block over the weekend. The current homeowners will be remain in the house until their new home is completed after which the lot will be turned into 200 new parking spaces for faculty and students. Although Dixie State is a dry campus, some students still drink. Dixie Sun reporting, reporter Coyote Cajabola has some tips on how to stay safe. According to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse, roughly about 18,000 students die from alcohol poisoning or alcohol related causes. Now, if you're a freshman who is all about the life of the party, or maybe a senior who is alcohol dependent, here are some tips and advice you might want to take into consideration next time you choose to see what's at the bottom of a bottle. You see a lot of freshmen come to college, you know, wanting to have a good time, wanting to party, and that's natural. That's, you, that, that, that's just part of growing up, but uh, I see a lot of people drinking way more than they should and they spend most of the night by the toilet or by some bushes. Definitely something you should pay attention to is how much you think you can drink, especially if you're a new drinker. Pace yourself. It's always gonna be there. It's not going anywhere. Pace yourself. If you're drinking, you should be drinking no more than one drink per hour and no more than two drinks per sitting. Also for individuals that are um, 21 and above and able to drink uh, legally, would be recommending still be responsible and uh, Use a buddy system when you're drinking. So one of my friends ended up drinking way too much and he ended up not even knowing who he went home with. He thought he was going home with his DD, but in reality he was just going home with some random dude to Mesquite and he lives in St. George. Please don't be out drinking on your own in unsafe environments. Have somebody with you. Um, 
Be looking out for your friends. If you feel like they're drinking too much, if you feel like they're in an unsafe situation, uh, intervene, help keep each other safe. Um, and then along with that is uh, making sure that you're, you're, if you find that your drinking is becoming problematic, to make sure that you're, you're assessing that and reaching out for help. For Dixie Sun News, I am Kai Day, Katabula. Make sure to always exercise good judgment and to drink responsibly. A St. George resident, Ashley Barrere, is providing a healthy alternative drink stop, drink stop. So when people come in, we always ask what they're coming in for. So some people come in, they want an energy booster, or this time of year when cold and flu season is pretty bad, a lot of people come in and they want something to build immunity. So just depending on what their need is, we'll recommend a certain juice or other products for them. She started Utah Juice Company from her home roughly a year ago and gradually started to appear in local shops such as Feel Love Coffee and Be Hot Yoga with her smoothies and health juices. Barrera has a juice for everything from pre-workout to immune boosting. She shares a space inside of Cheesecake Culture across from the shops at Zion. A St. George resident has been tested positive for the coronavirus while on a cruise ship in Japan. Jerry Jorgensen was taken off the ship and sent to a Japanese hospital for treatment to be fully isolated. Her husband, Mark, confirmed via Facebook that his wife is, is safe in Japan and is being treated. There have been two confirmed Utahns with the virus from the cruise ship, but Jerry is the first from Saint, Southern Utah to come down with the virus. Republican Senator Mitt Romney has joined a bipartisan... bipartisan bipartisan group of lawmakers expressing concerns over the FDA guidance over vaping products. In a joint letter to the FDA's director of the Center for Tobacco Products, the senators say the new rules do not go far enough to address how e-cigarettes attract younger users. They criticized the FDA for not including a ban on flavored vapes, citing a recent survey that showed it was the flavored products that kept kids addicted. A law requiring warning label on pornography in Utah has been passed by the House of Representatives. This proposal warns minors of the dangers of pornography. If the label is not included on printed material or does not display for 15 seconds prior to digital material, private citizens can file complaints and penalties for up to $2,500 can be issued for each violation. The bill is now under consideration from the Utah State Senate. Shouldn't come as a surprise that Utah is ranked 43rd on the list of most sinful states. In categories such as jealousy, lust, and gambling, Utah consistently scored in the bottom 10. The most sinful state was Nevada, and the lowest state was Vermont. Well, it comes no surprise for sure that Las Vegas scored first. I mean, it's in the name, Sin City. Yeah, I, I didn't expect Vermont to be in the bottom, but then again, once I started thinking about it, I don't know anybody in Vermont so I couldn't confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> after, the, oh, go ahead. after the break, we'll be sitting down with the panel of guests to discuss Black History Month. Get our print the road less traveled. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine. Boy, and only think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me, sun. It's gonna shine on me, sun. It's gonna shine on me. Artemisia is all the same present, but there's your needle and thread. Which one is this? Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. The big fat no there.
that's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a wonders. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. There is a place Welcome back. I have Will and Lizzie. Hide in the winter. So guys, what do you guys think about Black History Month? Do you think it's worth it to celebrate it? I think it's worth celebrating, you know, our heritage and knowing where we came from and where we're going. Yeah, I think so too. But do you celebrate Black History Month? Uh, supposedly no. I mean, it's honestly it just, I feel like it should be something yearly, honestly. You know, it's not really necessarily a big thing in my household, to be honest. Is that just the way you were growing up or is it just like, as you got older, you just saw no purpose of it? I once I didn't see any purpose of it, it's just that, I don't know, it just wasn't necessarily celebrating my house, so I didn't pay too much mind of it. I'm kind of the opposite, though, because when I, as the more I grew up, I'm like, ooh, Black History Month, I look forward <laughs> to this month, like, ooh, yeah. a month about me. <laughs> so uh, I recently saw the Google commercial. Did you guys see that? Yes, I loved it. It was cute, huh? It kind of brought a twinkle to your eye? Mm -hmm. <laughs> was it just me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I got a little teary-eyed from it. <laughs> I was like, oh. I mean, they did. They did it right. They put Beyonce as first mm -hmm. because after that, I wouldn't have. I would not paid attention. If Beyonce wasn't in at all. Yeah, so. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about Dixie State's efforts to actually celebrating Black History Month? I think they've been strong efforts. I really appreciate the inclusivity that they've had this year, mm -hmm. even starting all the way back from January with the MLK event that they did, mm -hmm. with the banquet and the community service, and then even with events that have been incorporated with the MIC and with the BSU, it's been very interesting and very helpful. I mean, honestly, I don't think I would have actually participated in any of the events because they weren't really broadcast around campus. Do you guys mm -hmm. feel the same about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. I felt alone on that one. I got honestly. emails and I'm like, who's this? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I got, um, I only know because I'm in the BSU. Right. So when we were getting emails about the MLK event, it was kind of like a, this is an event. Mm -hmm. How exciting. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you even tried to be a part of BSU or like, are you a part of BSU? Honestly, I'm not even a part of DSU, honestly. I hibernate so much. <laughs> I'm like so out of the loop, honestly. Like, I don't know what exactly is going on campus. Well, I really just go to work. why you <laughs> can't find out anything in hibernation. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, do you guys have anything else that you want to talk about with Black History Month? Um, will you bring that on to like your future peers or more of the DSU events? I mean, it's not too late. No, it's not too late. We're <laughs> only halfway through the month. Right. <laughs> and so, um, well, almost actually done with the month in a week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> more than halfway. But I mean, there's always time to incorporate. It's not just one month. It's a your whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. This so, is a lifestyle that we have to live. <laughs> well, I do suggest that you guys go see the art show, that yes. exhibit. I went, mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, if you guys haven't, please go check it out. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. Um, after the break, we'll, after the break, we have Mike, Michael with the latest on sports. There is a place where the sun doesn't hide in the winter, where the greens stay green and the crimson canyons still glow. There is a place where dimples determine destiny, and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where we drive for show, putt for dough, and settle the score with another round. There is a place.
Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. The women's swim team finished its last season in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference on a high note. The Trailblazers competed in the RMAC Swimming and Diving Championships and placed third overall. DC broke six school records and put the icing on the cake. Head coach Tamara McAllister was voted as RMAC Women's Coach of the Year. DC will wait and see if any Trailblazers will qualify for the 2020 NCAA Division II National Championships. It's crunch time for the women's basketball team as it picked up two much needed victories over Adams State and Fort Lewis. Slamming into the Adam State game, the Trailblazers were not afraid to let the ball fly from downtown in the first half. Guards Kesley Stevenson and Maddie Loftus made five of the 13 three-pointers to give DSU the edge over the Grizzlies. Step aside, Splash Bros. It's time for the Splash Sisters to get some of the spotlight. Adam State tried to reclaim the edge over the Trailblazers late in the fourth quarter by cutting its deficit down to four. Fortunately, DC survived the late push from the Grizzlies and came away with the victory. High energy on senior night for the women's basketball team made the difference in this game against Fort Lewis. The high energy from the Troublers kept them out in front of the Skyhawks and the big contribution from Stevenson. Stevenson had a great night shooting the ball from the field by putting up 90 points and knocking down three out of seven three-pointers. They're killing this wide open three from downtown. You cannot leave Stevenson open like that if you're the opposing team. With the win over Fort Lewis, DC moved up to the seventh spot in the RMAC standings. The Troublers will have their last three games of the regular season on the road, starting off against Regis tomorrow and Colorado Christian on Saturday. One step closer to becoming RMAC champions as the men's basketball team gets revenge over Adams State and slips by Fort Lewis. The Troublers had their way against the Grizzlies by not taking their foot off the gas pedal. The offense was rolling for DSU with four out of five starters being in double figures and the bench pointing up 45 points. The defense created turnovers which turned into points and stayed out of foul trouble. To sum up this game, as Queen would say, another one bites dust out. Although it was senior night for men's basketball, their energy was with them in the first, wasn't with them in the first half. The Skyhawks knocked down 54% of their shots, made 5 of 11 shots from downtown, and snatched, 30, snatched a 34-27 lead over the Trailblazers. DC woke up in the second half and dominated Fort Lewis in every aspect. The Trailblazers knocked down more shots from the field and from the three-point line. In the end, DC wins a nail bite over the Skyhawks. The Trailblazers will also hit the road, kicking off against Regis tomorrow night and Colorado Christian on Saturday. Softball Keys dominating at tournaments as they have a strong outing at the class Cactus Classic. The Trailblazers won four out of the five games at the tournament, outscoring the five combined teams 22 to 19 and improving their overall record of 12 and 2. DC will open up conference play against Colorado State Pueblo on Saturday and Sunday at Carl Brooks Field. Baseball splits his first home series of the season against former Pet Pacific West Conference foe, Azusa Pacific. The Trailblazers will take games one and two from the Cougars. However, APU ran away with games three and four against DSU. The Trailblazers overall record now stands at nine and two. DSU will have another home series Saturday and Sunday against Concordia University Portland and Bruce, at Bruce Hurst Field. Now, talk, now I, I saw on the weather, the weather app earlier, and it's going to be raining yeah. on Saturday, so uh, that's really unfortunate for some action on, for baseball and softball. I know. I did hear that the games will be canceled. Well, the game will be canceled on Saturday, so I do believe it will be moved to Sunday and Monday for those of you looking to attend. Yeah, definitely. Definitely check out some action. And what about you, Car Kiara? Just I, I, I don't know. I've never seen a game that has been more interesting than a game with a little extra water at the day after the <laughs> rain. So I'm kind of excited to see it, so I really hope that it doesn't affect it too much, but I'm excited. Yeah, I hope they stay fresh and just keep at it and keep, just keep rolling over teams. Yeah. Right. That's it for this week's edition of the Dixie Sun News at Noon. We'll see you here next week, same time, same place. Have a great week, Trailblazers.